The newest edition of the Twitter files, uh, reported by Matt Tybee, is not about censorship per se. It is about the use of the media as a vehicle for a systematic procession of lies. In this case, the lie is that the Russians are actively interfering in U.S. elections, and there are hundreds of accounts, maybe thousands of accounts, that are nothing more than Russian bots and Russian propaganda that is being, you may say, engineered uh, out of Moscow. It's Putin's hand that is behind all this. Now, there was an organization that claimed to have a tracking mechanism and a dashboard in which they would uh, list these accounts, uh, reveal them uh, to be the product of Russian disinformation, and they were trying to do two things. One is to get the media to cover this story uh, of Russia uh, involvement in U.S. elections, uh, Russian disinformation on social media platforms like Twitter. The group that was doing this that maintained the dashboard was called Hamilton 68. And when you look at Hamilton 68 and its board of directors, it's people like Bill Crystal, the never Trumper. Um, Michael Chertoff, uh, former head, I believe, of Homeland Security. Uh, Michael McFall, who's a professor, I believe, now at Stanford University. Uh, John Podesta, formerly the head of the Hillary for America. So this is the, the never Trump neocons and the left. Uh, and also people who are like deputy heads of the CIA, NSA. So this is deep state meets never Trump meets the left. And these are becoming increasingly, by the way, the same people. Um, and so Hamilton 68 said that they were, they maintained this dashboard uh, and they would identify these, uh, these sites. But as Twitter began to look into it, uh, and this is Twitter, by the way, before Elon Musk, this is, this is Twitter in the old regime, they realized that Hamilton 68 was putting out complete lies. In fact, here is a statement by Twitter from the internal communications. I think we need to call this out on the BS it is. Here's another comment by, by Twitter. This is the Twitter checkers inside of Twitter. Falsely accuses a bunch of legitimate right-leaning accounts of being Russian bots. So Twitter knew that these people were liars, that these weren't Russian bots. In fact, in some cases, they're well-known conservatives. Um, there's a list of them that Matt Tybee provides. One of them is this guy. In fact, honey, you'll get a good chuckle out of this. This is this, that fellow, uh, you know, Dennis Michael Lynch or whatever his name is. He was identified as a Russian bot what? by 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 uh, Hamilton 68. And uh, Matt Tybee calls up him and he goes, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the son of a veteran. I'm, I'm very much a real American. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm just a normal guy trying to put out social media. He goes, this is absurd. This is nonsense. But the point is Twitter knew it was nonsense. But here, interestingly, the plot thickens because inside of Twitter, you've got a bunch of people who, by the way, some of them later went on to work uh, for the Biden administration. Um, and, uh, and they began to fight inside of Twitter not to expose this Hamilton 68 operation. So in other words, here's Twitter uh, from its internal review saying, quote, these accounts are neither strongly Russian nor strongly bots. No evidence to support the statement that the dashboard is a finger on the pulse of Russian information ops, quote, hardly illuminating a massive influence operation. There are hardly any Russians. Mostly ordinary Americans, Canadians, and British. And so it turns out that, that this Hamilton 68 was a fraudulent op operation, really from top to bottom. By the way, Ham this group has now put out a statement basically saying, and I sort of uh, paraphrase, some accounts we track are automated bots, some are trolls, and some are real users. In other words, they're now admitting that their site is largely useless. And they go on to say, quote, it would therefore be incorrect without further analysis to label anyone or anything that appears on the dashboard as being connected to state-backed propaganda. So they're now admitting that this was a, 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 essentially a bogus operation, but a bogus operation that Twitter knew about, and yet Twitter didn't blow the whistle on them. In fact, here is... Um, uh, here are t here are some Twitter executives um, that um, 
um, resisted the idea of outing these guys. Now, this is strangely a case where Yoel Roth, who was one of the content moderating main guys at Twitter, was a, was a good guy. Yoel Roth says, quote, my recommendation at this stage is an ultimatum. You release the list or we do. He wanted to bust this group. By the way, the group is uh, Alliance for Securing Democracy. They're actively involved with Hamilton 68. Um, but Emily Horn, who then goes on, by the way, to work for the White House and work for the NSC, we have to be careful in how much we push back on ASD publicly. In other words, ASD is our friend. They're on our side. Um, and then similarly, a guy, Carlos Monge, who goes on to become senior advisor to Buttigieg in the transportation office, I've been frustrated in not calling out Hamilton 68 more publicly, but understand we have to play a longer game here. In other words, let's not call them out publicly, um, even though we know that they're putting out complete lies. So what a sad and disgusting story uh, of the way in which Bill Crystal, Michael McFall, Podesta, and all these bad guys, this is the, the swampiest of the swamp creatures. Um, and, and these are people, by the way, who make a lot of money out of this lying career that they've now set up for themselves. Similarly, Michael McFall of Stanford, he's constantly putting out pompous tweets, acting like he's kind of some pillar of moral rectitude. Um, no, he, these are basically termites, uh, they are swamp creatures and they deserve all the um, ignominious exposure that Elon Musk can give them.